Cheers and welcome my friends, I'm Honotrak and we are playing Imperator Rome, the pre-release version. We're playing as the migratory tribe of Teutonia. Welcome back! In the last episode we migrated away from our old homes in cold, cold Denmark over here and we went out to greener pastures. Our ultimate goal is to get this province where it's a farmland province which is quite nice you need less slaves to um, create more trade goods so 13 slave pops will provide an additional gemstones and then 26 and then 39 and so on so we can probably pull a lot of gemstones out of this and it's also ha it also has that additional local population growth which means we can put more people onto this tile before we get problems with the food. We want to get that as our capital and then we'll see where we go from there. We started out with 15 pops, currently we have 26 so we've already almost doubled our people. It actually doesn't really seem all that accurate since we have a bunch more. I guess it's just counting the proper pops we have, I guess, 27 touristic Teutonians. Not 100% sure how that, uh, how that is calculated, doesn't seem right to me. We have a lack of a governor over here. Need a governor. Let's see if we get a governor here. Um, zeal. Local population growth. That's fine. Whoa, come on. He's going for bleed them dry. That is not helpful, man. That is not helpful. We can switch that, but it's going to cost us oratory power, so... And I could ju probably just dispense with um, doing this, but... Okay. <laughs> kind of need oratory power desperately, but we don't have anything that we can put towards that. So, yeah. Mm, here we have local autonomy, which is pretty good. But here I also, like, I control this, the tribal chief, because that's the capital. Such is life. Such is life. I mean, there is an argument to be made for actually colonizing these areas, too. I could do that. I have 10 population. I could probably colonize these two and move people over. But I would then have to convert them as well, which uh, I don't really want to do. So this place has uh, 15, 16. And this place has 17, 20. Okay, so we actually have 20 people in here. So it's going to be important to get these guys out of there very soon. We can actually do it now. Mm. Do we do it? Depends a little bit on the loyalty. These guys are now gaining loyalty, uh, which is good. I'm really thinking about settling over here. Now, where was it? Over here, there are horses. Valum Romanum. There are only two pops over there, but we could make that our capital. Um, in the meantime, and then get some, and just attack these guys. They, they are in a war now with Sildensia. They are allied with Buri Devensia and Apulia. Uh, no, Albosensia. Okay. These guys are Apulia. Uh, I don't like this. These guys are actually fairly numerous. It's going to be difficult to get a war going that doesn't end in total disaster. Mm, might have to steal more population. Uh, I mean, bring more people into the tribe before we can do this in a reasonable way. Mm. Question is, so there's population map mod. There's still one place over here with a lot of pops. That's three seven nine people so if i send 11 guys up there that'll make this another like 20 pop thing that would allow me to pull nine people out of here and send them back into this province without incurring too many problems i think that's what we'll do here i think that's what we'll do i'm kind of liking that idea Okay, so we need to we need to split off nine pops. Send these nine pops over here. And if we now after this, if we are all on the march, 
we should have about 60,000 light infantry, which is more than enough to really just overrun these dudes, I think. Uh, that, should, that should probably be our goal then. We need to save a fair chunk of oratory power until that can happen. happen. Oh, we have a scandal. Um, in this occasion, the esteemed Tancred Makolos was found in flagrante delicto with his lover, Sigma Tancred, by his spouse, Bald Hild Riglaker. Okay, so we have a gay couple, uh, which is probably a real problem on these times. I mean, depending on the stance that they take, um, there was really no problem with that in ancient Greece. Uh, okay, what do we do? Shouldn't tolerate. I mean, I guess the infidelity is the problem over here, um, which is fine. He's not very loyal already. But why do I care about the wife? I will lose popularity. Holy hell. My guy is not very popular. I should probably do things that make me popular. I'll just have him flogged, I guess. Have him flogged. I'll give it to Baldrick then. That's fine. Oh yeah, we can go for another invention. I think we'll take the tax invention. Alrighty. So this is happening now. It's an interesting challenge. It's a very different playstyle from uh, from playing one of the settled ones. Like with the Sparta playthrough, we have like a whole system of state and everything. We can just go out there, take our armies, attack them. Here, uh, things work very differently, um, which I really like. I like uh, for things to be different and because that it, it uh, stays fresh for longer. I'm not sure if I would pick these guys in a multiplayer game. Uh, it seems a very risky strategy that I'm that I'm currently running. It will probably be... Yeah, no. What are you? Elder, head of the Maguni family? No. Nope. Doesn't. I don't care. Oh yeah, my migration armies don't have any... any commanders, but that is fine. We'll settle all these guys. Alright, so we're now at 19 pops over here. And these guys are where I wanted them to go as well. Okay, we settled here too. So that's 3, 18, 20. Right, so we have 20 pops here. I think we have 16 pops here. And we have 20 pops over here. That makes... 40, 56, plus the two um, chief retinues. So if we pull all of them, we have 56, 61, 67,000. That should be way more than enough to fight these guys down, especially if they're in a protected war. Oh yeah, we, we gotta we gotta save oratory power now for uh, quite a while. Sorry about that, but that's how it has to go. Uh, yeah, let's take let's take another trade put here. That's that's fine. Um, how are these guys looking? Um, Loyalty is actually going up here. That's nice. Uh, apparently, we didn't even need to take a different governor. No. Okay, Venedia. It's the same area. Actually, decently loyal that man. That's good. Can't have any trade routes here, so that's that's okay. Changes by a little bit. I like that. A feast for Borto. The residents of Gorodiva are holding a celebration in honor of their much-loved governor. Renowned for his beneficence, tolerance, and common sense. It is nice to see our approved candidates validated in such a way. We can go for the celebration. I mean, yeah, why not? This makes him very popular. He also gains more prominence. I think that's fine. I think that's fine. I mean, what what bad could come of this guy being an incredibly incredibly popular man? Nothing at all. 
Okay, so this place is to turn into a stick. These guys are already too a stick. That's probably a prime area where we should try to grab more population in the future. A big problem is going to be money, because uh, spending... We're going to spend a fair amount just by having 60,000, like our whole hungry migrant horde at the border. Mm, trade income could be fine. Home and power. I guess the morale recovery might come in handy in future fights to come. What I would really love to see is for these guys to maybe uh, splinter. I mean, they have 17... Oh, okay, they lost two cohorts. Or maybe they dismissed them on their service. Miraculous recovery. That's fine. Um, none of our clan chiefs are disloyal as of yet. But this guy is definitely getting there. Um, he has two of three friends. I should probably invest in becoming um, friends with my guys here. Just has one friend. Oh, but I just want the oratory power. I just want the oratory power. Come on. Hmm. How old is he? He also only has... Whoa, look at that. He's like losing a lot of loyalty now. Mainly because loyal cohorts. Yeah. Even if I make him my friend, it's going to be a, a big trouble. I can always bribe these guys so they get some more loyalty. But it's going to cut into our very precious oratory power, so... It's probably something that we shouldn't do too often. The other thing that we could do... Yeah, and there this guy becomes disloyal. 0.45. The thing that we need is a war for them to lose some troops. And for them to look maybe a little bit stupid at least. Lose some troops so they don't feel that powerful anymore. So what are we going to need? We're going to need 7754. And then another, another 50. This 204, right? And then another 27. So we need around about 230 power points, I guess. Yeah, 3 times 8 is 240. So I guess we're going to calculate with 240. So we still need double the oratory power that we currently have. Just to get anywhere. Mm, this is a real problem. It is a real problem here. I also... Qu I don't quite get why these guys are becoming disloyal, right? Um, I mean... Yes, they're clan chiefs, but isn't there like a way, like, didn't I get elected? Am I not an elected um, clan chief over here? So what's the problem then? I could probably try to bump these up to... Yeah. If they fall below 33%, that is going to be a real, real problem. We have a newfound tribesman. After certain disagreements internally in Arakuniata, a group of tribesmen have left Alta Ripa and they're looking for a new home in Florentia. Though they are somewhat different to our own people, they would surely integrate into our society quickly enough. On the other hand, accepting these exiles from Arakuniata could put us at odds with their old home. The tensions are already running high between the two groups. We should carefully consider if it's worth it. So we will get one Salto Pannonian tribesman. I mean, I want tribesmen, but the problem is we have... No, we have 19 people here. Yeah, sure, we'll take that one dude. Still Teutonian and Tuistic, so that's fine. Unfriendly neighbors. It seems Akuniata have declared us an enemy of their nation. As we worried about, they did not care much for us agreeing to take on some of the tribesmen. We should make sure to look out for potential hostilities from our neighbors now that our relationship has soured to this point. Otherwise, we might all find ourselves at the wrong end of a pike. Let him come. Actually, these guys... 
I have no allies. Cotinia. No, it's the other guys. Rakuniata. They are in a defensive alliance with Rakuniata. These guys have 11k. These guys have 17k. They're fighting Scudicia. I wonder if it might not be worth it to like get rid of some energy and just send them over here. But I really want to move into our future capital as soon as possible. <laughs> so, yeah. I, sh I shan't get distracted. I shall not get distracted. This is eyes on the target. So, barbarian traditions. Um, it's interesting. So, we have light infantry morale, light, light cavalry cost, chariot cost, um, enslavement efficiency. That's really what I want, actually. So that we can have more slaves and put them into our land. So, every time you take over a... if you Every time you siege down a province, there's a chance that you get a slave pop into your capital or another... Um, big city center and this is kind of the way that wars were waged during this time so I think we're gonna go down this it's also boost our light infantry morale which we have a lot of um, the chariots are kind of the defense against the light infantry so chariots are basically uh, pretty great at um, killing light infantry if you look at that damage was like cavalry 10% damage was light infantry plus 30% they're not good against anything else really um, but they do well against mass light infantry. So, yeah, that's actually probably what we're gonna encounter quite a bit. It's uh, one of the one of the things that you can do. Um, but then again, our tribes also have a lot of chariots. Our retinues, uh, they have a fair amount, I'd say. They have a fair amount. Um, oh yeah, right. I should probably pick one of these. Um, so light infantry morale. This goes down the archer route. Raise levies, heavy infantry offense, siegeability, army morale. That doesn't look too enticing. This is the chariot route, light infantry defense, army weight modifier, manpower recovery speed, chariot morale. Okay, yeah, it's also not too enticing. So I think this is going to be our tree. Um, we have to be very lucky and tech pretty fast to make any of the other trees. Because um, every time we take one of this, this boosts up the cost by 50%. And this can only be reduced by gaining military tech. And uh, yeah, we're not gaining a lot of tech. At least not right now. At least not right now. So we're at 177. I will save all the money that I have. All the money that I have will be saved because we're going to incur heavy, heavy costs once we have the whole migrant, ho migrant hordes uh, on the move. Now, the thing is, we don't have to make peace with these guys. We can just take over their stuff by settling our people in their provinces, which is a definite upside. We could basically just um, squeeze them out. Now, the problem, though, is that we will have to contend with disloyal provinces, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, we can deal with anything. So we're 201. The big move is almost here. It's almost here. Oh man, that is that is frightful. Seeing seeing that drop so fast. Oh man, monthly loyalty, monthly wealth. Oh man, that's also a lot of oratory power. I think we're gonna give both of these guys free hands. So that's tank raid. We're gonna give the other guy... What is he doing? Clan chief? Why can't I give this guy free hands? I have no idea. <laughs> Likely the next tribal chief. The problem is we don't really want to corrupt him too much. That is, that is a problem. What, with barons over here? No! Hell no! That's not good. These guys are gonna plunder our whole city. It's not possible to do this while we're under siege. That's also not good. With ancestral guidance, after some of the seers went through a ritual to speak to the ancestors, our high priest Markamund Sigimandrus claims the ancestors decreed more freedom to the priests to convince the masses several of the priests have used some of their own funds to support several large festivals across Teutonia. Following this charade will probably make us more popular among our people, though at the expense of our control over the religious elements of our society. So, 
we would institute religious status law plus 10 percent omen power could also tighten the control on these ridiculous seers for a hundred religious power it's not a lot of money for getting some religious power actually just 14 bucks we'll do this um raising a host um What? So Tancrant or Marcolis. Marcolis wants to boost his retinue by 5k people. That is that is a big problem. Also, this province is being sieged down. We're probably going to see a lot of our people enslaved. That might not have been a, a good move. We have no defensive armies here whatsoever. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, nasty, nasty barbarians. That's That's a downside. Of going for the strategy, so uh, it's not without risk. He's gonna lose 40 loyalty if I don't do this. But I'm not gonna. Oh, let's go give him 20 loyalty. Sure. Sure, man. We'll do that. Because that'll actually help us attack these guys a little bit easier. So, yeah, we're getting Siege down over here. That is gonna be gnarly. They deceased, uh, they decreased the civilization level, but at least they didn't kill everyone over here. Could make a client state. I could offer them some money to ignore our territory. Uh, 33 bucks. It's a lot of money, but we're almost, we're almost at the goal um, here. Where we, where we wanted to go. Okay, maybe we'll just leave me in peace. We'll no longer terrorize our lands. Thank you very much. I mean, actually, we're the barbarian OGs, but they don't know that yet. To GTN civil war ends. Bitter civil war of Togetii has finally come to an end with loyal forces of one guy utterly crushing the rebel armies. Where's to get here? I don't think I care too much about this. Oh no, over here. Right, that's because they're right next to us. Okay, that's where we get that message. Almost there. Almost there. I think we're already gonna we're already gonna start this. So all these guys, bring him up. Pull these guys. Uh, bring him down. This is going to be expensive. Um, there are some nasty events that can happen if we drop below a certain amount of money. Decrease in rank and on, on our city state instead of a local power. So it's not amazing. <laughs> but oh well. Uh, so we're bringing these guys down. Um, we have enough power to actually bribe this guy and resettle all our people from over here and move them into there. Uh, we are getting to this point. Barbarians are not too helpful. Oh yeah, these guys are also fighting a barbarian horde right now. Are you fighting? No, they're just, they're just getting taken over by barbarian horde. They're guaranteed by Gitia. Oh, that's not helpful. <laughs> this is gonna be a tough war if we do it. Friend across the borders. Marco Lake. No, we don't care about this. Uh, yeah, more invention. I guess national commerce income might be good. I don't know. Let's take technology speed. Whatever. It's fine. At least we have a fairly powerful clan chief over here with uh, some heavy uh, troops as well. So that's going to be pretty helpful in attacking those, go uh, attacking those dudes. So they've taken back Sadava. Yeah, they're fighting the barbarians. What happened? 
Really? We just lost all these guys? Just like nothing? They just were smushed? I mean, I guess we're low on army maintenance, but hell no. This is just wrong. <laughs> this is just wrong. We just lost like 16,000 of our people. God damn it. Okay, well. I'm just gonna pick up our things and go. Whatever. Whatever. It's gonna, it's gonna happen sooner or later. So, just come over here. We'll do the thing. Do the thing. We're also gonna bribe this guy. Hello. Uh, we have more inventions. I guess we'll go Omen Power here. That's fine. Okay, and the last desperate act. We've strong armed our people to get 20 bucks. We're really low on money at this point. Um, we gotta do things. I guess right now? I don't know. Gonna go up to normal army maintenance, which is gonna hurt even more. Even more. Uh, yeah, put this guy in charge of this army. So we're just a migratory, migratory herd of people just running around. Oh man, we're losing a crap ton of, crap ton of people too. So we've got to split this in half. I yeah this is this is really unfortunate that we just lost our whole army over here. I was kind of hoping that wouldn't happen. Okay, okay so let's split them just in two. Uh, okay, like this. We can always get more pops by going out here collecting some people. Okay, we're tightening the strings. We're losing research points, which we don't care at all about. Bigger problem is that we're incurring like a big war with a lot of people. Oh, they only have the guarantee from Gitia now. That's actually doable, I guess. This is a really good situation here for us. Come on, people. Getting ready. Okay, yeah, we're in a deficit. There's, there's no helping that. There's definitely no helping that, but... So there's Tancrant Macaulus, our clan chief. We have lack of equipment for our armies. It's all not great. It is all not great, but... There's nothing we can do. Give this guy a command, and we'll give this guy a command. Uh, we have no capital. <laughs> These guys just have the decree from Gitia. Uh, but they actually have uh, some big problems. They're fighting Portal Latensia. And Portal Latensia seems to be winning, actually. These guys have 20 courts. These have 28. No, all right, then. See how it goes. These guys are actually pretty big. They're like a regional power at least. Huh. Okay, right. We'll declare the war. Um, we got no CB, but no CB is the best CB. Gitea will become the enemy war leader. We'll do this. Uh, do we need anything? guys probably have a decent amount of morale so no need to no need to jump the shark here just be careful oh no okay they don't actually <laughs> they don't have enough morale that's hilarious all right then you really shouldn't have done that Can we catch him now? No. Okay, well, that's that's fine then. Where are their fortifications? They got two. They got one here, they got one here. So that's fine. 
Just want to siege them down here. We're taking that loss of those 16k on the chin. That's fine. We can we can get more pops. But we need to get going. We're losing a lot of money. And uh, this isn't really going where we want to go. Um, so this is the first Teutonic Migration. I think this is just a level 1 fortress. Yeah, it's just a level 1 fortification. So I'll tell you what, we're going to send Clan Makolos um, to siege this place down. It's going to be fine. We should probably attack him now. Gitea is the war leader in any case, so it's going to be difficult to separate piece these guys, but we'll see what we can do. And yeah, we have to start sieging down their, their fortress over there. Let's see how that goes. They are going to have a decent chunk of war exhaustion. See what they're gonna do. Holy hell, that's a lot of troops. Oh yeah, they also have retinues, I guess. So they're like they're like a settled tribe, I think. Just like, uh, well, they're settled tribe and we're migratory tribe. So that's a thing. Just sieging things down here. But they've been attacked by a much stronger enemy. But yeah, you see that they have they have those heavies. So that is gonna pose a problem for sure, for sure. Oh, and there's Gitea. Hmm. It's only a matter of time until they band together. I'm not sure why these guys are fighting this war instead of defending themselves, but... Okay, I guess we're gonna continue this next time. This is... this has been the plan all along. Let's see if it actually pays off. I'm looking forward to this. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And I hope you join me next time. Thanks and bye-bye.